Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a video overview of all of the 3D printers Rolohan Design has released and is working on. I would like this to be a really good video explaining which printers are active, which printers are getting updates and what's coming and just have a nice clear video for people who might be new to the YouTube channel or new to Discord and they're trying to figure out what printer they want to build. If you do like the printers that are on here, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing the video, and if you would like to, feel free to support the channel by joining the Patreon below or buying anything from the merch section here on my website. So, let's go over the printers that are on here and we're going to start, of course, with the Rook. This is my most popular 3D printer right now. It is very beginner friendly. It's inexpensive, there are kits available for this printer, and this printer is complete. It is a MK1 release, it is final, there's going to be no more changes to this printer. There is a healthy amount of mods, you can see here I have a link to my printables mod collection for this printer. That's where you can find any mods based on this printer, there's more and more coming uh, to printables every day. There is a full build manual. Um, this is constantly getting updated. Uh, there's a really mature bill of materials here. This is a nice, simple, beginner-friendly printer. It's great for your first DIY build, it's great for your first Core XY build, and it's great for your first Clipper build. Next we have the Rook 2020. Now, this is essentially just a 2020 frame version of the Rook above. However, please note this printer is currently being updated to a Mark I release. There are going to be a lot of fixes, a lot of changes to this printer, so I wouldn't recommend anyone watching this video go out and start building a Rook 2020 unless they want to make a bunch of changes. I will be doing a video on this printer soon on the Mark I version of this. It's a really cool printer. It is very beginner friendly and suitable for DIYers for their first time, that type of thing. But I would hold off just a little bit until Mark I is out. Next we have the Rook 180. This printer is also actively being developed into Mark I. So I would hold off on building the Rook 180. This is actually a very unique printer in the fact that the frame is entirely 3D printed. It uses three stepper motors that are belted and it has clipper Z tilt to actually level the bed automatically. It is a nice budget uh, DIY friendly 3D printer and it has a 180 build size. So the previous two printer here are very small 120 by 120 Voron V0 build size. This one is a larger 180 by 180. It does use a Prusa mini bed. And like I say, this is currently being um, updated into a Mark I release, which will be coming soon. So I would hold off until that release comes out. There's gonna be a lot of really awesome changes to the to frame is being updated so it's easier to print. Um, the tool head is completely redone. We're going with the Dragon Burner tool head. It's more compact, better cooling. The belt path is better. It, it's a really big uh, revision to the printer. And again, once these printers hit Mark I, they will be final. They will be done. There's gonna be no more releases to that. People can go ahead and enjoy building them and modding them and all sorts of stuff like that. Next we have here is the Rook Evolution. This is a printer that I released on my mini factory for I believe $8 US for the plans. It's a kind of a fun, fully enclosed, fully 3D printed uh, printer. It has a build size of 150 by 150. This is fully released. 
I don't believe this is going to get a Mark 1 release or anything like that. It's kind of, it's finished. I spent a very, very long time making this printer. We have a couple people on the Discord that have built this. Um, I've issued a couple serials on the printer. It is a, a really cool and very unique 3D printer. If you want a little bit of a challenge or you want to just kind of build something that's different from everything else, this is a really neat printer. I have people on the Discord who've built this and they use it all the time as a workhorse. Um, it's really, really cool. And again, like I say, this is final. It's fully released. There's going to be no changes on this printer. Next, we have Fortress. Now, this printer is a little bit complicated in the fact that I designed this printer at the same time as I was designing the Rook Evolution. Unfortunately, I got burnt out with Fortress and this release is on hold. Um, I would definitely like some feedback in the comments below if anyone would still like to see this printer come out. If not, um, we'll talk about in a little bit, I have other printers coming out that might make this printer obsolete. So I would be very interested in some feedback on this printer. Essentially, this is a 2020 frame version. Um, it has spun off from the Rook Evolution but it's its own thing now. I changed so much on this printer as I was uh, designing it. It uses three lead screws with a single belt and a single stepper. Uses a Prusa mini bed. It has a build area of around 170 by 170 and will be fully enclosable with printed panels. So it is a little bit unique. However, you know, there could be some other printers coming out this year that might make this printer obsolete. I don't know. I'd be very curious on people's feedback if they still want to see this come out. I'm taking a little bit of a break from it right now. You can see the status here is on hold. Um, and if there's enough uh, interest in this printer, I may revisit it. Next is a printer that I'm going to be actually working on next. Um, once my Panda Mini printer, which we'll talk about in a little bit, is more mature and I'm happy with its release. So my printer here I call Defiant. This is my uh, kind of officially released larger cross gantry printer. This uses dual linear rails in a, a cross pattern here to support the tool head. It's a very, very interesting printer. It's very, very rigid, has the potential to be very quick. It's got a nice build size. It has triple independent Z, so it has three steppers that are independent. It can self-level the bed, just like a Voron Trident. It is relatively inexpensive at around 900 USD, um, but this printer is beta, so I am going to be making some minor quality of life changes to this printer. I have some ideas. Not much is going to change with like the frame or uh, anything like that. You do need to put a top hat on this printer. So essentially make a top hat out of 2020 extrusions. The, the tool head does stick out the top of the printer. Um, there's not a whole lot I can do with that just based on how the linear rails mount and that type of thing. But you're going to see more videos on my channel about this printer very soon. This is my next project that I'm going to be working on. Again, this is in beta. There's a couple people on my Discord who have assembled this printer. And I would hold off until it is in a final release. Next, we have probably two of my oldest designs. They're very, very well loved on the Discord. They have an active um, Simple Core Discord channel. The first one being here, Simple Core Legacy. This is a simple 2020 frame Core XY 3D printer. It uses independent Z motors, three of them, and it uses belted Z. It is meant to be a very simple build and a very simple printer to assemble and you know purchase parts for and that type of thing. Um, I actually had a lot of fun. I learned a lot designing this printer. 
It uses the Eva tool head. Um, it's, it's a nice, decently sized printer to start with. Next, I wanted to update SimpleCore into a Mark I release. And I made a lot of changes to the printer. Unfortunately, I'm not super happy with where this printer ended up. What this is, is essentially, I took a Voron Trident frame and I put my own spin on it. You can see the motors are in the front of this. This uses the Mantis tool head by default. And again, going with the Trident frame, I wanted something that was like kind of easy, easily accessible and uh, very, very um, rigid. I'm actually using some of the Trident Z here at the bottom too with my own spin on it. Um, I just feel like it's so close to a Trident and the Trident, because there's so many kits available for the Trident, it just makes sense to just build a Trident. There's very, very few um, scenarios where you would want to build a Simple Core Mark I. Um, this printer, there's no panels for it. Um, you have to self-source. It's really only good if you have a bunch of parts laying around and you only want to print PLA. This is an okay printer then. So again, this is both of these printers are fully released and finished. I'm not super happy with Mark I and um, I do plan in the future of archiving both of these printers, basically meaning there will be no official updates anymore. I'm going to pull them off my website. They'll still be on my Discord so people can still build and talk about the printers, of course, but they won't be on the forefront and they won't be actively developed. And finally, I have my newest printer that I'm most excited about, and that's my Panda Mini printer. This is a 140 by 140 build area, very compact 3D printer, Core XY, and it uses V wheels for the Z. This has dual 120 millimeter layer cooling fans. It has exceptional um, cooling performance on this printer. It is meant to be a high performance, small form factor 3D printer. I have a couple videos about this printer already on my channel and I'm actively developing this printer right now. I plan on building a second version for a live stream that should be coming out within a few weeks. And I wanted to try out a lot of new ideas with this printer that are gonna be coming to future printers. So essentially what's happening is I am designing a full size version of this printer that I'm just calling Panda. It will be a 250 by 250 printer and it will encompass a lot of the design philosophies of this smaller version. I fully expect Panda to completely replace SimpleCore, my SimpleCore line of printers. So this should be coming out this year. And like I say, it's going to be kind of like my best normal size 3D printer. Like I say, it will be a 250 by 250. Um, my goals for it are I want it to be easy to build and I want it to be high performance. So that will be coming out um, this year. Some other printers that I've designed in the past are my Phoenix Delta. I do have a GitHub for it. I don't, I unfortunately don't have many uh, pictures of this. Um, it's not a printer that is active. I will be designing some new Deltas possibly next year that of course are gonna completely replace this. I've learned a lot since I built this Delta printer. This is like over well over two years old now. Um, I don't recommend anyone building that this Delta printer right now, just because I am going to be making a better version soon. Like I say, hopefully beginning of next year, depending on how my projects line up. Next, we have a printer I made called Abandon Cross. There is a video on my YouTube channel about this 3D printer if you want to check that out. It, this was a prototype. I was trying out a lot of different things. It's not supported. Um, there is no longer any Discord channel about this printer. Um, it's just not a printer that I'm, I'm interested in anymore. It was kind of a, a really interesting proof of, proof 
of concept, but it didn't go really any further than that. And next, we kind of have a fan favorite here called, uh, my printer called Cappy. So this is a printer that I'm going to be officially releasing, um, hopefully this year. This is a meant to be a compact, quick, Core XZ Cartesian 3D printer. Um, there's not a whole lot of DIY high performance Cartesian printers that are like small kind of desk size. And I essentially, it's a funny story designing this printer. I was waiting for parts for Simple Core and they were gonna take, you know, over a week or something from AliExpress. So I thought to myself, while I'm waiting, why not design an entirely new printer? And that's how Cappy was born. The name Cappy comes from the build plate is, it's meant to use Kapton tape. This printer is meant to be very inexpensive. It uses a 3D printed bed. And with Kapton tape, it's meant to print PLA. It's Core XZ, like I said, so it has two motors on the bottom, which control the X axis and the Z axis. So I am gonna be completely updating this printer for an actual release this year. And I know there's a, I get comments on my video on this printer on my YouTube all the time. People are really interested in it. There's people on the Discord. There is a channel for this printer on the Discord. Um, one person's actually already built it in this form. And yeah, there's some cool things coming soon for this. So for anyone who stayed to the end, I do have plans on designing a Rook style or Rook size Delta. So a, a small DIY Delta printer. There just isn't a whole lot of do-it-yourself modern, do-it-yourself Deltas in a smaller form factor. Again, put them on your desk. You need to print off some parts really quick, inexpensive. Um, get people to learn about building deltas and, and printing with them and uh, modding them and that kind of thing. So I'm very excited to design that. I, I have most of his design already on the go for a small DIY delta. So that hopefully will be coming near the end of the year too. So I definitely have no shortage of products or, you know, printers coming out. And um, that kind of sums up, I, I hope this helps people if they're looking at my designs, they're new to the channel or they're new to Discord trying to figure out what they want to build. I would uh, certainly right now recommend the Rook, um, recommend building the Panda Mini. Those are my uh, two favorite printers. One is really mature, the Rook printer, and the Panda Mini was just released. And uh, it is in beta form, but not, not much of the bill of materials is going to change. So that's a, a decent printer for people to start building. Um, so for now, I would recommend those. And like I say, probably uh, really quick here, there will be a MK or a Mark I version of the Rook 2020 and a Mark I version of the Rook 180, which will both be great options for beginners as well. So again, thanks everyone for watching. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time.